created to entertain, educate, and evolve the modern day deer hunter. Hey everybody. I just wanted to say Thank you very much for all the support in our first year here in 2017. This will be our final episode of the year. We'll be starting fresh 2018, uh, the next time we record an episode. Uh, A warning on this episode is a complete debacle of audio technical problems we got a little loud in this episode and it caused a bunch of feedback into our system and if we jump around or things sound a little bit funny as the conversations are carrying through I'm going to do my best to edit the audio together but I literally have like five audio clips that all have to be pieced together it was a somewhat of a disaster but i'm going to reconcile it the best that i can and uh we had a lot of fun recording this episode so it's the last one of the year really just wanted to say a big heartfelt thank you to everybody that supported us uh in our first year you the listeners and then uh there's just a couple companies here that uh you know helped us helped us out as we got our foot in the door this year and uh exodus outdoor gear playful lethal layering systems tap titanium archery products uh timber freak game calls caveman coffee tooth of the arrow broadheads bone broadheads backcountry hunters and anglers and common hunter uh i really do mean it thank you guys for the help um this has been quite a project and i really really like the direction that it's going in oh very excited about 2018 and we're all over the map on this episode um it's a lot of goofy stuff conversation goes all different kinds of directions but we had a lot of fun doing it and through those conversations uh, I know I mentioned once or twice I want some feedback from you guys that are listening to this podcast uh, week in week out on what you'd like more of uh, you know coming up in the future this is as much about you guys and girls as a community as it is about us guys sitting down every week to do this show so uh Message in on Instagram, Deer Hunter underscore podcast, uh, Facebook, Deer Hunter Podcast, or you can email the show at Deer Hunter Podcast at Outlook.com and give us some ideas of some shows to put together in 2018 so we can keep this thing rolling in the right direction. And one of the big reasons that I, um, am recording this here before we get to our uh, regular res- or our, our regular scheduled program was I completely forgot when we recorded this <laughs> to even mention that we are doing a giveaway uh, here for the end of the year. Playful was uh, nice enough to donate a Prima Light hoodie to uh, give away to one of the listeners of the show. And that it's a Prima Light hoodie is what it's called. 
And if you go to playful.com, you can find it on there and check it out. It comes in, I believe, four different patterns. You just tell us what size you are and what pattern you like, and we will get it get it out to you. It's uh, essentially a puffy jacket that can replace a layer that would normally be like a hooded sweatshirt. So you can fit this jacket underneath of your other jacket and uh it's a full-blown winter coat as far as as warmth where i was wearing it today shopping and you can't really go in a store and keep the thing on it's it's too warm but it's great <clears throat> it's my favorite piece and that's the reason why i asked those guys if they would donate that for a giveaway because uh i couldn't imagine not having that <clears throat> now that i have it so very simple if you want to enter to win that you need to share the post on facebook that references this episode and you need to go to playful's facebook page and like and follow playful you do those two those two things and uh just you know message us or tag us in it one way or another let us know that you did that and then uh I think I'm going to run this one for two weeks because, you know, people are busy sometimes and they message in that they haven't listened to the show until after the giveaways have already taken place. So I think I'm going to let this one run for two weeks. So not the episode after this, but the following episode we will announce the winner. So just do those two things. Share this episode on Facebook and... Go to Plythal on Facebook and give them a like and a follow. And we'll get you entered. If you got any questions about what that jacket is, uh, we did just do a Facebook Live. It's on the Deer Hunter Podcast Facebook page detailing some of the articles of clothing that I use in my layering system. And that that Prima Light hoodie is uh, a huge part of it. So uh, I could... If you have any other questions, feel free to message in, but it should have what you're, you know, what you're looking for as far as a description of what that thing is in that video. So, uh, again, thank you so much, everybody. Hope you had a great Christmas. Have a wonderful New Year's, and we will see you in 2018. Thanks a lot. It's lizard. <laughs> well, if you're trying to market something you'd care i guess so sell out but i mean <laughs> girl in a bikini will have sixteen thousand followers and why don't you try putting a bikini on kev <laughs> <laughs> you see my abs <laughs> you see my abs not in years <laughs> <laughs> some scientist that's making some has broken through and made some huge discovery and he'll have like a hundred and ten thousand yeah. followers and then some chick with big cans that posts a bunch of <laughs> photos of herself in a bikini will have a hundred thousand you know well, i guess that's the that's country you live in social <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's what social media is good for just put her in a lab coat and science will take care of itself yeah <laughs> back to the front and center yeah just make sure there's nothing under the coat whoa here we go giggity giggity well we just did our first facebook live that's exciting for me. Moving up? You have to tell me how it went. We're moving down in the world. <laughs> I don't know. It depends. Might be the latter. <laughs> I'm not yeah. a Facebook guy. I wouldn't know. I'm well, not. we just we just covered. Uh, we just posted a Facebook live. It'll be Tuesday. The what's what's the date going to be when this airs? Tuesday, the twenty six. Yeah, it's the day after Christmas. Boxing day. Ah. Boxing Day. God Never heard that Canadians. before. What? What? Boxing Day? It'll be the day after Christmas with when this airs, but today is uh, Thursday the... 21st, Winter Solstice. Happy Solstice. Mm, nice. Solstice You're not day. allowed to use Canadian references until you watch Trailer Park Boys. You're right. My mother would be very disappointed in me. You're not allowed to talk about Canada anymore. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I, I go back and forth. I like Canada sometimes, and sometimes I don't. I like Canada as a country. 
It's a nice country. <laughs> America's got top hat. got a lot hat. of wild wildlife out there, wild places. It's yeah. pretty cool. Can uh, you bring your microphone up to your beautiful lips a little bit closer? <laughs> what if I bring my lips closer to the mic? <laughs> He's got some skinny bird lips. Pot them out some. Do I? You're never going to win with those thin bird lips. Well, <laughs> the wifey likes them. Maybe I pucker them up good. There pucker up them DSLs. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you went there. <laughs> uh, we posted a Facebook Live video of a layering system that uh, I've been using, and there will still be a couple days left by the time people hear this uh, to go to playful.com, and they're running 40% off. So that's why we did it. We got a bunch of questions today. And if you don't got money, you can finance them through Plythal. Yeah, you can. You yeah, can finance right through Plythal. They'll do uh, four months of payments as well. 40% off. No credit check. No credit check. I don't know how they get away with this. I don't shit. know. So 40% off. They might break your fingers if you don't pay them. <laughs> yeah, they <laughs> said. called bone sharking. <laughs> <laughs> they end, uh, so 40% off and then four months to pay. That's insane. It's really affordable. That's cool. 25% down, right? I, I don't know the details of it. It was twenty five cent twenty five percent down and then Oh well, yeah, that's your first your first payment. Down. Yeah. Right. So it's a good deal. I can't say that. Do I you know. want to hide it from the wife? <laughs> I don't I don't condone that, but some people do that. <laughs> I don't condone it, but I do it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> oh. What were you gonna say? I say I, I I cannot think of another company to mind that does that or has a payment system like that. As yeah. far as uh, hunting apparel, clothing go. Right. No, or in general. Could you imagine if you could make your purchases like that? Do yeah. they accept PayPal? Do you know? I don't know. Because if you do, you got six months, same as cash with PayPal. My wife uses PayPal all the time. I love they, it. Uh, I can answer that question. Answer it right now. They do accept PayPal. There you go, folks. Because I bought my father. <laughs> you heard it here. <laughs> I bought my father a hooded sweatshirt for Christmas, mm-hmm. digital camo one, yep. and my wife paid with PayPal. From awesome. Plythal. Yep. You heard it first on Deer Hunter Podcast. Yep. Awesome. Well, awesome. that's great. Six months, same as cash, PayPal credit. Wow. Boom. <laughs> Uncharted territories for the outdoor community here. Well, we got to step up. Not not for everybody, but for me. <laughs> it is handy. Very I got handy. a feeling a lot of the outdoor community knows about credit cards. And <laughs> <laughs> I mean, let's face it, this gear is not exactly cheap a Dude. lot of the time. So. No, it's not. I think my card was still smoking from all the year's purchases. <laughs> Well, that's why I talk loudly when I find a good deal or uh, gear that exceeds its price tag. Because nowadays it's uh, some really heavy price tags on stuff, right? Yeah. And you're like, what does this stuff possibly do that it costs that much? That's like part and of their like, slogan too, ain't it? What? What's gear the? that outperforms its price tag. I don't think. Is think it? It is. <laughs> oh, yeah. Maybe Playthol is this. Playthol is, yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Gear if that outperforms its, not, it's you're price. You're welcome to use it. Well, they no, he's right. It does say <laughs> that. <laughs> it does say that on their gear that outperforms its price, which I'll say is an accurate statement. Yeah, it was. I was skeptical when I first bought the stuff. I thought I'll buy it, and if it's junk, like I'm kind of expecting it's going to be for the price tags that I'm seeing. You're gonna tell everybody. I'll just send it back. No, I wasn't yeah. gonna troll their. <laughs> oh. Troll I will. Instagram. I'm I wasn't trolling. gonna troll their Instagram. I'm troll them out. <laughs> Give them a bunch of bad comments. I was just Don't gonna send. Me. I was just gonna <laughs> send the stuff back, and that's what started the whole relationship with them. Is that uh, a year before I even started this, I found all that stuff, and I was just like, "Wow, this is great stuff." I don't see it anywhere. I don't know anybody that knows about it. People should know about it. Well, yeah, I had pretty bad <clears throat> sticker shock being out of the game for a little bit and seeing <laughs> the price of everything. I'm like, for polyester, you know, it's a bunch of Recycled leisure suits cost six hundred dollars, <laughs> <laughs> but after you know, closing my eyes and clicking the submit button. <laughs> what yeah. about when you ordered your gear? <laughs> <laughs> once I got untied, I ordered the gear. <laughs> but uh, yeah, once I actually got it and started putting it to practical use in the field, it was unreal. You know, it's living up to the dollars and cents. Yeah. Well, I mean, you guys, I don't even have to hide the fact i've been basically using you guys as my guinea pigs throughout the whole year <laughs> right <laughs> openly admitting that i'm cheap and i <laughs> and i'm gonna make sure well not cheap but i, I like to uh you buy next, things you uh, sit next to the dink yeah well i like to buy things honestly i look at a lot of reviews and a lot of times you don't know what to believe online because some people are like me 
they have that experience, and they're going to smear the name, even <laughs> though it might be a good company. <laughs> but um, you guys all used it, pretty much all of you, right? Uh, I haven't worn any no. Playful yet. Okay. Drew's just like me, but you two have Yeah, used everything that I always it. get, he's a size larger than me, so nothing really fits. What kind of little brother is that? He's got to rub it in, too. That's messed up. <laughs> it's a bigger uh, little big brother. One. Bigger little brother, mm-hmm. like mine. But, uh, no, you guys have been super happy with it, and uh, I kind of I had some other investments I made this past year, mo- mainly on our mobile setups. We've oh, talked yeah. about it before, our <sighs> going with the Lone Wolves and the Step Ladders and, and, and all the different uh, brands we've tried out. But this next year is my year to upgrade, and I'm looking at Playthaws. They're, they're number one right now. I'm telling you, that's a smart move is to sit back, watch a bunch of other people make mistakes or see what their successes are for a year, right. and then ride their coattails to success. I'm normally the dummy that's making all the mistakes. You're usually so I'm gonna, blazing the trail. Yeah, I'm going to sit back this time. Well, I watched you blaze the trail on the Ohio experience this year, and next year I'm going to ride your coattails to success. Right, like our like our other buddy Nick that went to yeah. one of our spots, and he got yeah. a nice buck. Yeah. You know? But uh, oh, my, yeah. I wouldn't take back the Ohio trip, just going back hindsight on 2017 and, and I invested a lot of money and time into it. Uh, I wouldn't trade it for anything. It was a great experience. Um, I'll definitely be going back. Are you going to go with me uh, in two weeks? If I get my piece of junk CVA back in the mail from I'm warranty sure we can service. I'm acquire a muzzle loader from somebody to take down there. I would say that. Uh, can you are we plan it for a day trip? or Well, uh, overnight? actually, may Just I? May I? Uh, interject please <laughs> um i had a conversation with uh chad yesterday from exodus okay and we have some stuff to discuss uh about um 2018 mm-hmm. as far as the podcast goes and exodus and drew had mentioned and i asked drew i said would you like to go down to exodus for a day sit down with chad talk some stuff over and he said, well, I'm already planning on going to Ohio next week or the weekend after New Year's. Yeah, like the 5th. To do a deer hunt. Mm-hmm. And so I thought, hmm, what if we could kill two birds with one stone? So I called Chad and I or told two him. two deer. Two or two deer. I don't have a tag, Same but I I could film and document the the hunts. Okay. And so Chad said, let me check my calendar and see what I'm going on. I also would like to kill a deer with my muzzle loader. And nice. so Good maybe we'll, it, it it just might work out that we'll go down there and do a deer hunt and then a hook podcast. up hook up with I don't know if we'll do a podcast it might be more of just a pint um, night deal we're gonna have a working business relationship with Exodus in the year of 2018 we it's nothing's finalized yet but we just had a discussion yesterday mm-hmm. um we told them we're. A, it's apparent that we support their business motto and their product, and they asked if we would inter- be interested in working with them in 2018, and I said, absolutely. And I said, I don't know about well, financial stuff because financial stuff always seems to ruin everything good. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, you add money to something, and it just makes good things go bad. Right. And I said, we really like you guys, and, uh, you know, I consider them to be friends of ours. And so when money gets involved, things just can get messy. Right. So, you know, we don't know the exact details of what is going to be yet, but uh, what I suggested and Chad liked the ideas of that we're going to be maybe doing, like, some uh, field testing for them. That would be a good idea. Nice. So when they have new product that they are getting ready to put out, uh, like they're getting ready to put out cell, uh, the cell cams that everybody's been dying for. Thank God. <clears throat> potentially we could get our hands on them, test them out, um, let them know, you know, if we find things that, you know, as soon as you hand something into somebody else's hands for the first time, they catch things that you don't catch. Mm-hmm. You know, just like if I was to take this jacket off and give it to you for a day, you'd be like, you know, I don't like this about it. And I'd be like, oh, I never even thought about it. But different strokes for different folks, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, that might be how, you know how we do business together but well honestly as far as the exodus thing goes i've used a lot of different manufacturers for trail cams and i can't think of a better trail cam company Mm -hmm. or or brand to work with an exodus no i mean even even though i mean to be honest not 
it's it, probably a, what, what all of us grabbed. We got a decent amount of Exodus trail cams. In yeah, the between all of us, we probably have a dozen. Right? Yeah, yeah, and we've had issues with maybe yeah. what uh, one of them. We did have issues with one camera. Yeah, and they mm-hmm. went out of their way. They took care of it. Um, they took care of the issue. They're easy to talk to. Drew, I think you had the most experience with them. Yeah, they and had. I mean, their customer service was second to none. You know, and I think the quality of the camera, you had issues with it, but the way they're set up. The formatting of them, the design of them, the construction of them, I think they're by far a step above anything else I've used. Yeah, after that initial run of problems, I haven't had anything. And when I talked to them on the phone, you know, it was never any kind of attitude or anything. It was always, let's just sort it out. And, I mean, if I'm having problems with something and somebody on the other end of the phone is wants to get through it with me, you know, they're not, like, talking down to you or anything, right. I don't, I'm, I'm fine with it. I don't have a bad experience. Well, it's to their interest as much as it is to yours to make sure that the thing's working. And see, if I would have dealt with them, I wouldn't have trolled Exodus. They would have taken (laughs) care of me. (laughs) You mean you wouldn't have trolled CVA? CVA. (laughs) Well, yeah, that's that's what I meant. (laughs) Yeah, if CVA would have have given me good customer service. Does CVA have Instagram? They do. Is that where you've been trolling them? Yes. (laughs) 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 You know, I just lost my mic. It's okay. We're just uh, going into a little back, but a little back feed protection there because sometimes we get a little loud. Am I on? I don't. I don't hear it in my in my mic. <laughs> Fuck him! <laughs> Punch. <laughs> just to see him. You got mouth. all upset. We're about to come <laughs> unglued. I'll I'm just yell s- into the I'm microphone and shut this whole operation down. <gasps> we will call it major technical difficulties. <laughs> that was a pretty big one. It's more of a personnel we, issue at this it point. It is a personnel That's all right. issue. I'll get to it. <laughs> We're all good, folks. I'm going to rock the fucking boat here. <laughs> We're all good. I think mine might tip it off. I seem a little loud. Yeah, you know, I'm not an audio engineer. I'm a plumber. So Let's do it underwater. When we have a uh, little bit of audio glitches and th- things just sound a little bit funny, I hardly am going to apologize <laughs> because uh, this has been a bear <laughs> to learn and figure all this stuff out. And for the most part, I think it comes together pretty good. But every now and then a problem occurs and we'll do our best to work our way through it. And we just had one. We. <laughs> I blew the we shit were, out. We, yeah. <laughs> Ryan blew, literally. You're going to have that. Blew the amplifier to pieces. Right. Just wrecked the O-rings on his muffs. But so when your muffs are like 11 months into their 12-month warranty, just have me on your podcast. We remained. brand new stuff. We remained calm. <laughs> yeah, I saw fire travel down the wire. <laughs> CVA's got you all, got your panties all bunched straight up your butthole. You, you might are, be a good company, but I doubt it. You are hot. <laughs> <laughs> You're meaner than a dog shit in tax. Yep. <coughs> well, don't do me wrong. Do you know on professional level media outlets, they don't talk bad about anybody? Yeah, well, we're not no. like that. We're going to tell you the honest truth. It's cool because we got a lot of messages this week for guys, uh, guys messaging in saying, hey, we appreciate you guys keeping it real. Like, and saying stuff that we're gonna keep it street here on the Deer Hunter <laughs> podcast. I'm Playing not prison sell rules. Out. <laughs> I, well, I, I, I honestly c- kind of, I this is kind of like a, um, I don't know if it's a guilty pleasure of mine or what, but I almost <laughs> hope that I've got warranty issues with everything I buy, because, whoa, I, I really do. Speak Just to me. because you actually find out what kind of people you're dealing with, what kind kind of company it is, the you're way right they take care that. of you after you spend your money on their product. And you've got an issue, and you call them up and say, I've got an issue with your product. You've already got my money. Now what are you going to do? Right. Like You're G- right. Like for GMC. Sure. And they, they get me as a customer for life, and they will get me as a salesperson for them without paying me. They can pay me if they want. I'll give them my address. They can send me a check. But <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, I know, I'm just he telling you the truth. He takes PayPal as a PayPal, PayPal account. I've got a PayPal account. account. But no, Bitcoin? I, I – um, <laughs> I'm not, I don't know. I don't even, I even know what they're talking about with Bitcoin. <laughs> well, I don't we're going to steer clear of that. Yeah, today. I don't. I don't care. You're going to send them. you a check for twelve dollars and seventeen cents. I was let down on your birthday. I was let down by a company, but there's been a lot of companies over this last year that I've been very happy with. Muck boots were great to deal with. Um, I'm trying to think of who else. Alps, I had an Alps pack. You they, did have a lot of issues this year, didn't very you? Very rough on this stuff. Well, I, I'm going to use it. 
I'm not gonna, <laughs> you know. <laughs> it's not gonna sit on the shelf. No, I'm gonna use it. Gotta pull it out, play with it a little. You know, and then if if I honestly break something, I get it. But if your product doesn't stand up the way I think it should in the woods, with me not having to baby it and have to think about it every second I'm in the woods, like, oh, I'm gonna break this thing I got, I just bought the other week. <laughs> no, I don't want to have to think well, about be careful. it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, you know, there's been a lot of great companies I've dealt with, and that I will deal with for life now. Until I get some, well, I mean, I think I, if I had a good customer experience with them one time and I called back and I had a bad one, I would probably give them benefit of doubt and I'd try to talk to that person's manager or somebody else. Yeah. But if off the bat I'm getting some wiener I'm talking to that's not going to take care of me, doesn't care about me, I'm never going to buy your stuff again. <laughs> I'm done. You that's wiener. It. Yeah, some weenie. You buried the wiener. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's it. It. <laughs> Your word of warning. Don't be a if weenie. If you burn Ryan Nevidal <laughs> on your <laughs> warranties or your customer service. Close your social media down. Close <laughs> your social media down or it's going to be filled with a bunch of hashtags. You're a wiener. <laughs> you are a wiener. Good Behold. luck with your weenie product. Behold the pale horse. <laughs> yeah. The man that sat upon was Ryan Nevidal. <laughs> <laughs> but, no. I. Uh, I don't know. I'd like to think that every company that we've talked about on this podcast this year positively and the companies that we have working relationships with are companies that we picked because they have an exceptionally high standard for how they deal with their customers. Most of our consumer direct, and if needed, you can speak to the owner of the company by calling a telephone number that That's is awesome the big thing is time it's how much time does it take yes to even to deal the e- with this right to get answers and stuff it's you said time. it months ago when you were dealing with hha i don't have time to sit here and send you six emails call me so we can figure this out on my lunch break real quick it's gonna take five minutes right i want a phone number i want to talk to the person silent man it is <sighs> That what? didn't sound silent. Super <laughs> professional. Was I was trying alarm. to. No, I want to know who's calling you. Yeah. Oh, it was my alarm to ask you that question because I forgot the past three you times. You set an alarm. Oh my He sets an alarm for the fucking <laughs> what? podcast. Can't you make a note? <laughs> I don't know. What? <laughs> <laughs> oh. I guess we're shut down for another half an hour. No, we're right back up and running. But All take right. it easy. I, I don't hear myself again though. Hey, <sighs> put a lid on oh it, Mister. I was you. laughing. Do I get a loud Mr. laugh? Man. Yes, you're a, a loud You laugh? have a commanding presence. Ryan Nevidal, you're boisterous. <laughs> I'm not going to hide in a corner. It's weird. You're. Uh, it's recording them. All right. I don't have to hear myself. I, I don't care. I can't. Well, it's that, actually better. That could be a problem. You can't no, hear him? I can't hear him. Speak but to I'm me. on there. You can hear me. I'm next to you. It's kind of nice I can't hear him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like he's like service and how personable it Drew is. Drew doesn't want to talk about customer service. Anymore. Ryan was just screaming about something. Yeah. I got, got a good a example. Case of Tourette's tonight. Well, here's what's happening. Ryan's fired up. He's had a long year. It's been long. <laughs> yeah. And so he's kicked our amplifier into <laughs> overprotection <laughs> twice now. So we've had to restart. But that's okay. We'll do a little bit of... Soft editing. We calmed them down. Patch it together. Give me another beer. Can you just leave the video run? It would just not have audio for... Because you use this audio, right? Yeah. I mean... You could just let it run through and you wouldn't have audio, right? You would have to leave a huge dead spot in the podcast right. in order for that to happen. So. <laughs> it would be funny if we had like a backup mic. Like, <laughs> would it look like I'd like people to hear that the fact that when we're recording is the same that when we're not recording i mean you could run another mic and just have it sit here to pick up well we're gonna we just made a executive decision ryan's getting a new microphone thank you our our double muff mine dusk mount (laughs) you're gonna wrap yours in electrical tape (laughs) tin foil (laughs) see that's that laugh that's it that's the laugh i think that's a really jolly laugh it. i think we got you <laughs> it's we, genuine we got you backed off enough now this whole thing started because we started talking about uh exodus having a good customer service and then we went down a slippery slope we went down essentially a sewage line of 
CVA's customer service. <laughs> oh, sure, don't be careful. I know. He's already starting to yell again. <laughs> All right, well. <laughs> Next topic. Well, let's move on. We'll move on. All right. Um, Maybe they're a good company, but. Like I well, said, what I we started it. to say um, was that we feel like we're we're trying to bring companies to the forefront that are smaller companies that make really, really good products, products that are going to exceed the quality of 90% of what you're going to find on the normal shelves. At uh, a reasonable price. At a reasonable price that have exceptional customer service. And that's what brought me to... I don't, I'm not going to go back on them. I'm just going to touch real quick. The reason I went with CVA was because they had a lower price point. How do you feel about their customer service? <laughs> Stop. They had a lower <laughs> price Stop. point. Give they me had, the, they I had need. a lower price point. And, uh, I need a <clears throat> little shot here. I felt that uh, <laughs> I should give them a shot. You know what I mean? I, in the literal sense, I, I would <laughs> give them a shot. And um, I was very impressed with them. For the first two and a half Whoa. years, three years that I bought this brand new CVA. And then uh, as soon as I had a deal with them, I was very disappointed. End of story. Maybe they'll reconcile it. Maybe you should buy a Knight. They own Knight, don't they? No, I don't think so, do they? I thought they I'm did. I'm not sure. <coughs> uh, so I don't even want to. We talked about muzzle loaders last week, but somebody brought to my attention. Uh, <coughs> I know you saw that post, too. Oh, about uh, Doc White. Yeah, those are awesome. Those were awesome. I've never even heard of that before. Is yeah, that those the are brand a muzzle loader. I posted a photo of my muzzle loader on Instagram, and a guy commented and said, "Is that a Doc uh, Doc White?" And I'd never heard of Doc White, but apparently Doc White was the guy that he was a pioneer in the made the muzzle loader that the modern style in for night. So you got the Doc White Knight? Doc White Knight. It looks just like the one you have. looks just like the white muzzle muzzleloader my dad. It was co- the model was a, called a bison. Mm. They had the white tail and the bison. The bison oh. had a heavier barrel. I think mine was that. Yeah. And the white tail had a more of a slimmer uh, rifle barrel. Mm. There was a hunter way back in the day, like a pro hunter, Roger Raglan. He used those rifles a lot and shot a lot of shit with those rifles. Roger Raglan. Jiminy Christmas, look at this here, Buck. He's so mature. You know who that guy <laughs> reminds me of? Who's that? Is uh, Ron Jeremy. Oh, oh, man, yeah, he had a dickish stash. You could switch those guys back and forth, and you'd hardly know which one's which. <laughs> yeah, he had some cool videos. Until so you pulled their trousers <laughs> down. I thought Jeez. you were going to go there. I was waiting for it. He was rather animated, but he shot he so shot many muzzle loading nights. jokes that I just can't use. <laughs> yeah. But, but yeah, the thing that's cool with the white muzzle loaders is you could the ram the weight of the ramrod would pretty much push the bullet down the barrel. It was, it was awesome how She's easy it was to load. It's a heavy barrel. <laughs> but the only thing that was a bummer is back then you had to shoot this white specific uh, bullets, which were kind of a pain in the ass to find. Oh, yeah. So I think that might have been. <clears throat> well, I know reasons. with my gun, I I never have a problem putting anything down there. <laughs> Touch a lube. <laughs> Touch a lube, and it goes right effortlessly right to the bottom. <laughs> Making a boy. <laughs> Throwing the pile driver. Are you kidding me? It's a science. But, uh, yeah, those whites, man, they were, they were awesome. Super accurate, too. Hmm. That's funny he mentioned it. I didn't know they were still making them. Yeah, I didn't know anything. About I'd never even heard that name before. Yeah. Doc White sounded like the guy from uh, Back to the Future. Yeah, I'll see if I can find some of the bullets. I think my dad still has some of the old ones lying around. What was that guy's name from Back to the Future? Dr. Emmett Brown. How do you know that, though? That's what I the can't... guy's name was with the white hair that drove the car? Yeah, Christopher Lloyd. Doc Brown. Doc. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I was thinking Doc. Doc White. I can remember that, but... Uh, doc, Doc, that's what he's calling them throughout the movie. Yeah, those were nice, uh, but they were... They were... Uh, it was a procedure to clean them. Well, mine's procedure to clean. I shot a deer over a week ago, and it's sitting dirty. I've been looking at it. Yeah. But I know it's like... 
triple seven, dude. You don't have to worry about this shit. Yeah, I'm no, I'm not worried about it. I've let that gun sit for you know whatever a month before without cleaning it, and it cleans back up. Yeah, I did. What do you? Hey, secrets don't make friends. Yeah. I'm sorry. You in preschool? I'm being, yeah, whatever. Yeah, I did some. We never talked about powders or whatever, like research about the differences in powders. Uh, was it Pyrodex and regular black powder? It's they're all, you know, carbon based, but the charcoals derived from wood, and so that makes it a little bit corrosive. But Triple Seven and all the other high tech ones, they get the carbon from sugar bases, mm. so you don't have the wood. Really? Yeah. You're so smart. I know. Triple <laughs> seven doesn't have sulfur, and the sulfur is highly corrosive. Really? Somebody say wood? Yeah. Is that? Yeah, I think that is what I'm shooting. Triple seven. I yeah, like triple seven. Granular triple seven. Man, I like that stuff a whole lot. I love it. I've been happy with every triple <coughs> seven product I've used, hmm. from their primer to their very clean powder and all that. Yeah. Well, I knocked uh, another buck down with a uh, hundred grains of triple seven last week. I hate you. I figured that I was going to cause a little bit of a <laughs> ruffle through the podcast studio. I was, <laughs> I was hesitant. It's been a long, I hard you, year for me. I thought I'm you were happy sitting in my stand. Yeah. And I saw that foot where I'm like, this son of a bitch. That's, that wasn't me. No, you're fine. I'm not there, though. I'm gone. you got to be kidding me. I'm gone. Oh, is it me? I'm gone. I'm gone. I think it's this this channel. Cause I didn't say shit. I didn't even chuckle no, you or didn't. laugh. What if you? you s- I want you guys to take. Are we recording now? And we are we there? Are we there yet? <laughs> okay. All right. We're gonna make gonna lay a down pact. Some. We're gonna make a conscious effort. Let's just make a podcast to keep our audio levels in check tonight, because we've had a multitude of problems. It's been. What about fifteen minutes since we've easily easily recorded 15. without a problem? We're gonna try to keep you awake tonight, folks. But <laughs> I can by say solving I'll try. the problem, problem Ryan's just keeping his mouth closed. No, it I'm wasn't even his fault no, last time. We're we're you having some. Blame it on me. I'll be your martyr. <laughs> <laughs> but we're having I'm just technical saying, I can say I'll promise. We're gonna. I'll I'll try to. Right now. I'll try to edit this up the best I can. We can um, make it work. But, it's you know, you guys podcast. were just talking. And we'll get right back to where we were. We were just getting into the story of uh, the buck I shot this week. But you guys said you don't like the polished stuff, right? No. No. If it's a turd, let it stink. I feel the same way. I like the sound. If it's a turd, let it stink. You know, it's kind of like putting a silk hat on a pig. <laughs> you can't polish a turd, but you can spray paint it gold. <laughs> it's still going to stink, though. <laughs> yeah, I... Uh, I like good sound quality, but I definitely do not like. We yeah. drove Kevin to Polished hard liquor ads and <laughs> yeah, filtered He's taking airplane bottles. You down. don't want the conversation no. running through a a strainer and then a right. sediment filter and then a carbon filter yeah. before it gets to you, right? Oh my god! I don't, he just said that about CVA. I don't I want it to sound it. like the host has got a gun to their head by the sponsor. Right. I get that. I totally do. You know that was the allure of podcasts. Yeah. When they started was it was uh, the hosting site that we use for the podcast is called Liberated Syndication. It's a good name. Say what you want. You're liberated. Why are is everyone so quick to get tied down by having somebody looming over them? Yeah. It's the money thing. I mean, nobody gets paid unless somebody's able to move product. I mean, just watching, like, re- gear reviews on YouTube, you're going to be more apt to buy something or believe in something by someone that seems more natural and genuine, like one of us, hard-ons, right. promoting something than some polished company-sponsored right. dude. Right. Horrible did. audio is going to be your aunt, your teller. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Tell, tell, tell. <laughs> I mean, if you're all We're sh- going to win them over with bad sound quality. Yeah. <laughs> well, that and if... I want to sound like a strip club announcer in here. <laughs> <laughs> Next on the stage is Lexus. Here we go. We got Chester coming up. In the video. That's enough. Um, <laughs> I completely forgot. Lost no, my train. Um, 
Kevin, you're going to tell us well, about and we're gonna, your awesome season. We're, you know, I'm not saying that we're not going to uh, represent companies, but you're never going to see, and we were just talking about that, you're like, well, just because, like, um, you like Plythal doesn't mean that I'm going to go buy a whole set of Plythal. You're like, I just bought a whole bunch of First Light stuff last year. Like, I don't <laughs> Yeah, I'm not selling all my first light stuff. Yeah, <laughs> it's no. good stuff. And I think that's a good, I think that's a good way for people to make measurement nowadays, is uh, companies and outlets that use different, different stuff. You know, if you only see somebody all the time, every time, and in every picture, they're wearing gear x or gear y yeah right it's pretty easy to tell that <laughs> but if you see them every now and then they're wearing different you know i i feel like it, if it comes to the point to where we're tying our name to a specific brand or product that we would put our name on that product personally like on the tag or like no. embroider it on there? Or well, I mean, yeah, that's Sharpie nice. it on there? No, but I'm just, I'm just saying. <laughs> if every. Yeah, we're not going to, every product, or if somebody just calls up and says, hey, I want to give you a bunch of stuff and just talk good about us, can we're not going to just write my that. name on it, then I can wear it. Right. Other than that, I'm not yeah. interested. Right. <laughs> no, I, I, just, I just feel that like uh, if you did have a partnership or a sponsor that on this podcast, it would be something that we've dealt with for a while yeah. and that we would personally say if you have a problem with it call me up you know because uh i haven't had any issues with them or i have and they've been accommodating they've taken care of me it's a good product it's right. a good customer service not that you're never gonna have an issue with anything because that's ridiculous to think that way yeah no i think people that listen to this show and that have messaged in know that we've never been paid one dollar by any company and like we take it personal um if somebody was to buy something that we made a recommendation on over this podcast we'd want to be the first people to know that you had a problem with it we're not going to sell out because <laughs> we would you know we'd feel that that was our responsibility that we kind of led you in that direction so it's definitely uh something that we would reconcile i guess Ain't nobody got time for that. No, nobody does have time no. for anything. <laughs> Absolutely not. We hardly have time to get this podcast done. Uh, you tell me I can drink beer so I show up. <laughs> <laughs> you guys see a new fridge? I do. No, no, I don't. You didn't even notice that's a new new fridge? Oh, it is. It's nasty inside, though. What happened in there? <laughs> is that the amount of refrigerator freezer side by side? It is. What a quality product. Mm. It uh, had a <laughs> unfortunate <laughs> incident. Uh, can of Coca Cola Zero. Uh, Classic. Yeah. So the reason Call that their customer service. It's a. <laughs> I didn't <laughs> smell any calories in there. You could tell it was low calorie soda. I could tell the ca- soda sucked. <laughs> the old fridge freezer shared a thermostat, so in the winter when it got real cold out, if you had stuff in the freezer, it would start to get soft because mm. it wouldn't. The refrigeration unit wouldn't run. Right. So this has individual stats. It has a freezer stat and a fridge stat. The and old you, fridge was probably from the 70s. I you don't know. understand that because you're kind of a heating and cooling guy too yourself. I mean, I did go to school for heating and cooling. There you go. So, but because I was erring on the side of caution because we butchered a deer this week and put a bunch of venison in there, mm-hmm. I turned the fridge and the freezer, both the thermostats down as low as they possibly go. Well, apparently, if you turn the fridge thermostat down as low as it goes, it's going to freeze basically anything that's in there. And it froze a can of Coke, and there was an outrageous <laughs> explosion in there. I it mean, was bad. It blew the top right off of it like you use a can opener. Yeah. It perfectly just. Were you in here when it mess. went? No. No, but I'm surprised it didn't shatter the glass shelf. Good God. For I mean, I searched around. I mean, it's a fridge, right? How far could it have gone? It took me like a minute to locate the top of that can. I had to search around through everything. It like <laughs> it blew the thing to smithereens. 
looks like a bomb went off it was in a there. tough tracking job huh yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be a mess to clean yeah it will be all right all right we're back on track <laughs> tell us about your muzzleloader buck i shot a muzzleloader buck nice for the one. second year in a row Squiggle, two, squiggle tines. Two late December bucks. Squiggle tines. I like that name. Whitey McSquiggle tines. Whitey Ooh. McSquiggle tines. He is so cool. <laughs> I just every time I look at him, I just want to feel those squiggles. State police just waiting for him on the highway. <laughs> <laughs> tines have peronies. <laughs> no, it's really a, a unique buck. It's not. It's. I mean, obvious next to your other buck, it's not as big. It's not as massive. It's no, it would nice score substantially lower. Um, but it's two inches wider right. than my other buck. You can tell there's from the same area. The color is identical yeah. on them. It's completely identical, but on uh, what would you say? Your G3 mm-hmm. and your G2 on the one, for sure. Maybe even your g3 on the other one it's got cool like little squiggle on him There's, yeah i don't know it's kind of cool yeah i like it he's got a lot of character that he does. was a fighter like me yeah. yeah i think he was a fighter i think he's he looks like a fighter <laughs> <laughs> okay <a> fighter <laughs> <laughs> yeah he's got a, a holy field ear on him yeah he does he's got a hole punch straight through one of his ears no oh, yeah i didn't even notice that yeah so, Shot Tyson Thanksgiving, and you got his nemesis. And <laughs> I, th- I, I think that that table right there would be a uh, a happy season for any person that would Michigan guy at least. I I'm could still say holding out for bigger. Yeah, me I, too. I, my goal's that high. <laughs> I passed on four bigger. Drew's yet to drop his standards. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm holding out for bigger. Th- they're nice bucks, and that uh, that muzzleloader deer would. It's a nice one. I think late December is uh, a great time to kill a deer. Underrated time of the year. I think that, uh, you know, come the beginning of December, a lot of people vacate the woods. A lot of people are done. And especially toward after Thanksgiving, mm-hmm. when people are tied up with holidays, a lot less people are in the woods. The weather gets colder. It's a little tougher. It's not for the faint of heart out there. The thing is, is there's a select group of deer that have survived to that point. And where are they? They're probably not where everyone else has been. Otherwise, they'd be dead. Well, I start to. I think that starting to get in December, they get back to a, 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 a I don't want to say normal, but they start to get back to their normal routine, like before the rut, and everybody gets back in there. Mm. I, I think so. You give them some time off. Maybe not your first week of December. They're still looking but you give their them a shoulder. You get them. Oh yeah, they are. They're no looking, doubt. But yeah. I, I just feel like they start to relax a little bit because they get pounded. You know, all these guys get out there beginning of October when the weather's nice out in the woods. All the bow hunters, bow hunters, and then I'll say cross <laughs> bow hunters. Well, all, all you know, all the hunters out in the woods, you get ton of pressure all the way through October. Then all the guys begin in November. I, I really personally, I like the beginning of November a lot after Halloween before uh, opening day gun. And then opening day gun, you get the Orange Army out in the woods. I think once you give them that week off, they've had such an, an incredible amount of shock to them. When you like put that dead zone of a week of like the people like, oh, okay, gun season came by. I, I didn't get something or I did. I'm just, I'm done. Most people are done after November 30th. It's, I think the deer kind of get start to get back. Mm. Maybe not the – I don't know. <clears throat> I think they go pretty nocturnal. I would agree. Unless there's a weather front mm-hmm. that they recognize that's pretty nasty and people probably aren't going to want to be involved with. And at that point, they'll move pretty freely. Or at least they'll be late to coming back to bed in the morning. So they're, so not they're late move. morning movers. They're – yeah, they're going to move throughout the morning. What When you get that temp drop, and it's, it carries all through the season, right? They say as soon as you get a temp drop, it's the best time to deer hunt. Yeah, right. I think that's amp- rise, amplified late season. You add a little bit of snow. Mm-hmm. It's just like with people. Um, it can be 26 degrees out, and there's no snow, no weather, and you look outside. Nobody's out. And... 
it's a lot different than if it's 26 degrees and like driving snow you look outside and you're just like damn it looks cold out you know (laughs) and i i think deer recognize that too and it it might make them a little bit anxious where they feel that uh and a lot of their food sources are getting covered up so it's going to be harder to find food right and when they lay in their beds all day they have to burn calories to create body heat and the colder it is the more they have to burn to maintain their body temperature true so they realize that it's dangerous to move throughout the day so it's probably in their best interest to not move at all during the day so they would probably want to eat late in the morning or early in the morning right and try to come back to bed right at daybreak and sit all day and then not move until the last hour of light. But the trail cameras say around here that they don't move till an hour after dark. Like right. 7.54 p.m. Do you, do you think there's <laughs> anything, too, to these deer getting conditioned to not moving during those witching hours that we would say like in the morning or in the evening where they start to move during the midday when the guys – start to get out of their stands and bump them around. And then there's like a dead zone between say, I would say like 10 30 and two o'clock where people typically go, go in, take a nap, eat, and then go out for the night hunt. I'm wondering if these deer start to get into like a midday thing. Well, they, they, they do that for yeah. sure. But I think later in the season, they're just worn out. Yeah, man. They just, I buy that not to go anywhere. It's way too risky. I've just heard of people, some guys, not many, but some guys have said, you know what? I don't even wake up early anymore. I walk out at about nine thirty, ten o'clock. I sit till about three, four o'clock, and then they come back in. They just hunt the midday. They yeah. don't even hunt the night. I, I could never get myself into that. No, I mean, how are you going to get into a bedding area at nine o'clock in the morning? Well, the deer are already going to Well, be you're there. not going to get into the bedding area at nine o'clock in the morning, but if you were to walk out there and get, if you were able to be patient, and disciplined enough to be quiet enough to get within, say, 80 yards of that bedding area and set up and then sit there, he might see something. Yeah, but I think I that, just, that your chances are probably better actually yeah. to creep in and, and at the late night when they get up to move again to, to hunt it. You know, I think to eat. a special – well, all year really. And John Eberhardt's the one that I uh, heard this from first is that you have to beat them back to bed. You got to get to where they're going before they get there because once it gets light, they're not going to go anywhere. And that's unless they're in the rut and they're chasing does around. Even in the rut, going mature deer their, um, here in Michigan, they're not hardly. I mean, unless you're on a managed piece of a big managed piece of property with no pressure, deer, they're just hardly moving during the day unless it's in a thick bedding area you I'm know i'm pretty much convinced after this season that deer don't move during the deer period <laughs> i would agree deer with don't you. move at all there's no deer movement yeah i would agree with you just walk around with night vision guys no I'm, I'm trying to think to this year i i mean i saw a couple nice bucks and most the one in ohio was in the morning that was early morning first thing it wasn't oh was it first thing yeah it was and you were set up pretty close to a scrape, weren't you? Yeah. Yeah. That was your very first hunt in Ohio. Yep. And you kind of went in blind. You, you knew where I we went scouted. I went completely blind. Well, you knew where we scouted. I knew where and we scouted. And then you wanted to walk off and find your own set in right. that area. And you stumbled upon a scrape. Yeah. And then you set up, what, 20, 30 yards from it? Yeah, about 20 yards off the scrape. First light, he... Uh, basically caught you with your pants down he did <laughs> <laughs> it never works like that for me i didn't expect it to be that easy and it wasn't you, because <laughs> you might have been able to arrow that buck oh yeah i should have been able to but and you said probably a 140 class yeah that would be my guess you know yeah. obviously. so if you overestimate it maybe a 130 but that's a nice buck yeah take my scoring abilities hit they're not the best i will say that but it was definitely a nice deer and that was the weather on our trip. I think we've already talked about these in podcasts, but we're kind of recapping our season. Yeah, the weather on that trip was <clears throat> this 80 is our degrees. last our last podcast of 2017. So right. we're gonna go right into like a scouting podcast probably after this. 
Mm. Well, you know what? We we actually in our area, we've got an extra month. Yep. In Probably. the county that we're recording this podcast right now, we've got one extra month of deer hunting this year. Yep. Archery, um, and it's a little different. No baiting allowed. Archery only, and your combo tag. I seen. Good for it. I know. I've seen guys in Michigan right now already posting photos saying, "Oh, take me back to November." I'm thinking, why? It's still deer hunting season, right? Right now, you could be out with a bow shooting anything. Right. That you have it's a tough. for. It's tough to go out right now. It's it is cold. But it's not that cold though. No, it's not it's right not. now. It's no. really nice out. It's been forty almost the last couple Everybody of Everybody gives <laughs> up. Everybody mentally checks out. And Guys it, are saying, let's go back to November. And I'm over here saying, What are you talking about? It's you still have a tag and it's still deer hunting season. Right. Right now. You've got a solid week left right now of deer hunting. Why season. are you thinking about a almost a year in advance right now? When you have a tag in your pocket and it's deer hunting season, I even agree. if you can go sit out there, that's a, that I made that decision when I left that morning to kill that buck. That if I went out and didn't see a deer, it was better than staying in bed. I agree. I think, um, and that's guys, why I killed that buck. The guys that say take me back to November are big crybabies. I could say take me back to November because I had a week of vacation I could use at that point in time. Well, it's a beautiful time of the year. (laughs) Everybody loves it. I I totally get that. I think that uh, if you really are a diehard deer hunter, like I would say everyone on this podcast is diehard. We love white-tailed deer. We're fascinated by them. We love to hunt them. I mean, everything about them. They're awesome. I have found, and it's not like it's been like a long long-term thing for me but especially starting last year the more and more i get into it the scouting part of my deer season to me is just as fun and fascinating as the actual hunting part of I it completely and agree. i cannot wait to get into a scouting part because the nice thing about scouting is there's no letdown <laughs> there's no letdown of deer season where you go sit and you don't see any deer right you know you don't you don't have to come home with no it's deer. really exciting you have nothing but possibilities for the next season i completely agree. and uh it's just exciting a it's lot like of waiting for christmas you know yeah. all the time i always want to like climb down on the stand at 9 30 and, and go scout. walk around yes yeah so guys get into your scouting get yeah. into your scouting it's I, fun i, com- I completely it agree so much fun but it's going to help you out. What I'm getting at is that there's this this mindset, um, and it's it's hard to keep a positive attitude throughout the season. After November 30th in Michigan. Yeah. yeah. You're, you've gone out a handful of times. You haven't seen a single deer. Then the holidays hit. There's things going on, and you're just, you know, you've been getting up early for a couple months already and you're worn down and you're just like, man, I'm just done. I'm going to mentally check out. But there's still like days to be out there and soak up and enjoy. I don't know. I, I like December. I said, I made the conscious decision when I got up that morning that it was like there's a high percentage of a chance I'm not going to see a deer. Mm-hmm. And I just finished up listening to a podcast where um, some guys that say, certainly don't waste your time in the morning. If you're going to deer hunt this time of year, you have to go in the evenings and you have to go to food. Late season? Mm -hmm. I thought I heard that more about early season as hunting in the afternoons rather than the mornings. Well, I think this time of year, too, is what the guys that have big managed farms that sit over cut corn fields and bean fields. This is not that kind of podcast. This is not that kind of podcast. This is far from that kind of podcast. This is the exact opposite of that kind of podcast. So that's not the realm that we live in. Nope. Hunt when you can hunt. Hunt when you can hunt and yeah. enjoy the shit out of it. Right. And I made the decision that morning to go. I saw the weather. It was going to be good. And I thought, you know what? I'd rather go get out there and sit and not see anything than stay here in bed. And it granted me the opportunity that I saw a nice buck and I was able to shoot it. It's a mindset. So tell tell us exactly how it went down i mean you told me already but how did it go down with this number two so (laughs) 
<laughs> <laughs> Who does number two work for? <laughs> Kevin V. Now tell us for the people. Yeah, tell us. Pretty good story. S- Saturday morning. Um, Woke up 4 a.m. Yeah, a week ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, 4 a.m. Woke up and looked at the weather and saw that I had a good wind for a tree stand that I hadn't sat in a while what that was, was on the edge of bedding. Mm-hmm. And it was 20 degrees. And there was... At like 6 o'clock in the morning, there was a 40% chance of snow. And then by 8 o'clock, it was a 100% chance of snow. And that was all through the morning from like 8 till noon. That front a, moved in. We had a good amount of snow that weekend. You had a front move in. And so there was already snow on the ground, and it was going to snow all morning. And I was like, you know what? It's just going to be a badass morning to be out in the woods. And uh, so I was... It was tough to get up, like we just talked about. Late season, right? Everybody's kind of beat down, and I'm not going to say that I wasn't. Like, I got up, and then I laid back down. Oh, warm and cozy in your and bed. And I, I got up, and I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to go. I don't have anything to do. And I'm like, I'm not going to see any deer. I'm just going to go back to bed. Laid back down. And then finally I got up, and I'm just like, you know what? <laughs> you asshole. You started a deer hunting <laughs> podcast this year. Get up, you hot on. You're kind of like de- a Duncan, man, going back and forth. It's deer season. You have an opportunity to go deer hunting. Go. And I was like, yeah, all right, I'm going to go. I like so, that voice on your shoulder. Got up, cup of coffee, out the door, into the tree stand, probably a little bit over an hour before... I could see to shoot. And about 30 minutes before I could see to shoot, I was kind of looking around. And I thought I could, you know, there's snow on the ground. So, like, I could see the second I got up in the tree stand. So I thought. It seems like you can see a long ways. But then, you know, probably 30 minutes before it was an actual legal shooting light, I heard something, a uh, stick break, and I turned and looked, and there was a deer like 20 yards from me. And I'm looking, and I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm like, I have no idea what that deer is. I can't see. And so I looked through the scope, and through the scope, I couldn't tell what it was. I'm like, damn. I thought there was enough light to see, but I, apparently I could see a deer's image in the snow, but I couldn't see what it was. And I'm watching, I'm watching, I'm like, Damn, I want to shoot a deer. <laughs> you know, I have a deer in the scope in late December. I'd love to pull the trigger, but 30 minutes too early, and I really couldn't tell what it was. I have a doe tag, private land doe tag for this county that I'm hunting in. Mm-hmm. So any deer that I had in a scope, I could legally shoot. And I need another deer. Within sh- proper shooting hours. Within proper shooting hours. Yeah. That posed a problem. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, I watched that deer walk off, and then it got light, and probably a half an hour after daybreak, I saw a deer working through the woods out at quite a distance, and it had its nose to the ground like it was feeding, but it never stopped moving, and it was covering ground. I'm like, that's a buck. That's a buck. He's like sniffing around, checking things out, you know, maybe a young buck, right? Now... Let's rewind one year. Holy shit, we gotta go back that far. <laughs> <laughs> Quentin Tarantino style. All right. <laughs> Last year, this time, I killed a buck up in northern Michigan and the pigeon that was aggressively chasing a group of does. Six point. Yep. Yep. And he was bird dogging him around. I saw a lot of bucks Is that, that behind weekend. You? Yep. Let's put this guy right here. Oh, that was him. Hold him up. Yeah, that was a cool little Northern Michigan six point. Get cobwebs on. Damn, Look how sorry, those dude. antlers are. I like it. I yeah, love I those know. scraggly. I, I North. think it has to do with the cedar that they incorporate in their diet up there. He's a fighter. Yeah. <laughs> so, so in your head, you rewound. I had never experienced that before, where uh, had seen a buck chasing a doe. You know, there's this like. It almost seemed like a mythological thing, right? The second rut. 
But biologists say that does that don't get bred in November go through their cycle and doe fawns both come into heat in the middle of December, a month after peak breeding. Do the they first call that peak ju- gestation cycle? Their gestation cycle or something like that? No, I think that's the amount of time that it takes to make a baby. Um, right? No, I don't know. Um, I thought that was when they... We're not scientists here. <laughs> at the the one guy podcast. with no kids is the only one who's like, yeah, that's what it yeah, means. Yeah, that's totally it. Yeah. <laughs> Am I right? I know all about this stuff. <laughs> yeah. No, but um, yeah, yeah no. if they don't so, get bread, that they go into heat again. Yeah, so I experienced that last year, and I kept that in mind this year, and that's exactly what this buck was doing. He was cruising for does. And so I think the buck that I saw eight eight thirty 8.30 in the morning that was working its way away from me, was this buck that I saw at nine thirty, cruising his way around, Cru- coming back, coming back through, and he was cruising the edge of bedding. And I saw him at probably one hundred and twenty yards, because there's snow on the ground, and there's no f- foliage in the woods whatsoever, so I can see a long ways, and I just saw deer working through. And I put my gun up with the scope, and I saw, well, it's a buck. Wow, he's a nice buck. Squiggle horned. Yeah. And the way that he was coming towards me, he was kind of coming on an angle where he was going to cut behind me and get into my wind. Okay. So he was at 85 yards, and 85 yards through the timber – There's not very many windows to shoot, right? I mean, I had the scope on him. I'm following him through the woods, and I'm like, man, if I get a clear shot, I'm pretty much going to have to take what I get. And uh, he came to – now, mind you, the way that I'm sitting, looking straight at you, and I have my gun on my lap, I'm right-handed mm-hmm. and right-eye dominant. Mm-hmm. He comes from my left side. So you have to spin. I didn't spin. I just turned the gun over, put the gun on my left shoulder. Oh, it was perfect. So it came from your right yeah. side. Came from my right side. Right. Sorry. It would be screwing me up a little bit. Typically, yeah, if he would come over my left side, I'm good. Right. He right came. side, it's a little tougher. Right. Non-dominant eye, yep. non-dominant right. arm. You're still using your dominant eye, but it's not natural to spin around. You're using your right eye. No. You use your left eye? Yeah. You're a wild man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why no, would you I, use your right eye? Because I would have had to stand up and move, and I didn't want him to pick me off. There's no foliage in any of these trees. Holy mackerel. Watch that. There's the choke cam's leaning right on you. Got her. All right. Good catch. I, so I eye. picked the gun up. That's Flip, crazy. Flipped it over, put it on my other arm, and 85 yards, he came through a small window that I had, and I took a 85-yard brisket shot on him. Pff, old left eye. Yep. And dropped him so hard. <laughs> you said brisket shot on him? I never saw a deer drop and hit the dirt or the snow that hard. He just collapsed. <laughs> and I'm just like, wow. That's pretty neat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, the muzzle loader is a 250 grain sabot, right? Yeah. A hollow point Barnes. Barnes, hollow point, polymer tip, sabot. 100, 100, 100 grains. 100 grains of triple seven. You're probably cruising about wow. 2,000. Yeah. I would say, that, I'd say right around there. And. I ended up not hitting him where I wanted to hit him. I shot high. Now, I'm free-handing it in a tree stand, no shooting rail that or nothing. That happens a lot. Yeah. You know, it's like my first initial thought was, oh, that was a bad shot. But it's, like, hard to say that it was a bad shot. When, when you drop him? Yeah. And so what ended up happening is he's quartering towards me, and I'm looking to take a brisket shot on him. But I hit high. 
about eight or ten inches. Ooh. And EKG him. Wow. I send the bullet down his spine. You reamed him. Spinal tap. Spinal tap. Turned him up wow. to 11. Literally <laughs> just dropped him dead. Turned him into jello. Dude. Oh. So EKG, where does that come from? I w- was listening Echo to cardiogram. Uh, yeah, where I heard it referred to wildlife was on a Ranella podcast. They were talking about running coat hangers down the spines of fish to kill all the nerves so it would make the meat softer, and they were calling it EKG. Echo cardio. How do you, how do you pull that off? A gram. I d- yeah, I don't, I echo cardiogram is what it stands for. I was listening for. to the podcast. I didn't see it done, yeah. but that's what they were talking about, how to like get the most tasty fish fillets was to run a coat hanger and basically destroy all the nerve endings in the spinal cord. God, that's so good. I was really disappointed Never. when I walked up to it and saw... Where you hit? Yeah, just because... It's not where you aimed. It's not where I aimed. I, I was totally bummed out, and I was like, son of a bitch. I was like one inch from like not even hitting this thing. Deader than a doornail. So it made me realize two things. Uh, one, sometimes not where you're aiming might be a better shot. I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Well, here's the thing. I thought, well, yeah, I hit him in the brisket. Your lungs, heart. heart. Liver, Stomach. guts. Yeah. I'm thinking, there's oh a lot my of God, stuff in this there. This thing's going to be such a mess to gut. You know? Right. When I got up to him, I'm thinking, God, this is going to be terrible. Couldn't be farther from the truth. Couldn't have been farther from the truth. It destroyed six inches went to the of slaughterhouse. Six inches of tenderloin. Mmm, that's a bummer. Not as much of a bummer as shooting him through the shoulder. Shooting them through the shoulder, which happens often when you're aiming for lungs or heart, right? Really tears up a bunch of meat. I just hate doing anything with the loins, but yeah. I, I get it. It does. Yeah, uh, it, 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 it was only a six meat. six inches. A mass of meat, yeah, right. six inches. So, uh, it just it worked out great. And two, the second thing it made me realize is that I need to start practicing with your left eye. Yeah, get out of here. No. Hundred percent. If I had practiced that shot a couple times, well, I feel confident that I would have hit my mark. Correct me if I'm wrong. When you're looking, d- doesn't matter what eye. You're looking through the scope. Mm-hmm. That crosshair is that crosshair. Right. Yeah. But you so still. So as long as you don't jerk it or pull it weird because it's not your normal eye or whatever, that's where it's gonna hit. Right. I probably jerked it. <laughs> I mean, historically, I've been known for jerking. <laughs> <laughs> and having a hair trigger. That's all right. Yeah. No, I mean, I'm sure I moved. I'm in, in a tree. I, I'm in a tree stand. No, <laughs> no shooting rail. 85 yards. That's a sh- tough shot. It's cold. I give you props for that. Even no, I was hit cold. it where you were aiming. I was outrageously free hand at 85 yeah. yards is a long shot. Oh yeah, for yeah. sure. For anybody I know. I don't know any Top Guns, I guess. But. I uh, it was cool though. I, you know, I saw the deer coming through the woods, and I had like a minute to process what was going on, and you know, verify that it was a deer that I wanted to shoot, and exactly what it was, and everything. And I was like able to like slow things down a little bit and soak up the couple, the couple, you know, moments in between seeing them and killing them, and just enjoy the whole thing. Man, it was extremely awesome. Well, I'd have to say I, I, I made a post on it once this season. It's been a pleasure. For, out of anybody that I know that's been hunting personally this season, you on average but with both of your deer have had the most successful season that I know of personally. Yeah. Is a close friend. And uh, I know other guys that have been, you know, that are friends of mine. Um, um, Nick, the the other, the other Nick, sorry. Boner man. <laughs> Boner man. <laughs> and uh, our, our um, your cousin, Jason, um, for different reasons, yep. I've been able to share some successes of my friends that have been very fulfilling for myself. I've really enjoyed it. Uh, Jason shot his first archery deer ever. Kevin, you've got two nice deer sitting on the table. You 
I, even though you haven't got a deer yet this year, you're not done. And I really, it's exciting to watch you to get into deer hunting for the, really kind of the first time in a long time. Yeah, it's not your much. first time, but your first time in a long time. Took a hiatus. And uh, it's been very exciting to see you out in the woods and with us. Yeah. And um, Drew, you're in the same position as me. <laughs> You've worked your ass off this season. Yeah. We haven't had anything that we can put our hands on and, and take pictures with or even put in the freezer. But nope. we can in get invited to our friend's house to have some nice venison dinners <laughs> in your brother's house. But it's it's been a – we've went down to Ohio for the first time. It's been an exciting time. So I'm not done for, yet. For, right, and you're not done. I'm not done. But for any of the people listening out there, try to celebrate the things in your seasons that might not necessarily be a deer or meat in the freezer. Um, you, the for things you've learned, the times you've had with your friends – I, I get in a slump sometimes, personally, where I get hard on myself, I get bummed out, and uh, that's not what deer hunting is about. It's not what it's about at all. Just get out in the woods, experience it. Um, if you're not having fun doing it, you're don't doing do it. it wrong. Stop doing it. Right. Just stop doing it. Don't bring the other it's people not for down. You. <laughs> but sometimes <laughs> you need a friend to lift you back up. I I I just kind of uh, I don't know. Uh, I really appreciate the group of friends I have, and um, I mean, it's just, it's been a good season, nevertheless, for, sure. for me. I'm not going to let, not getting a deer, it's not over yet for me, but I'm not going to let, even if at the end of it, I don't get a deer on the ground or, or punch a tag, it's not going to ruin my season. Well, how fun has this been? Oh, it's been awesome. It's man. been fun. We yeah. spent a ton of hours together. We've all p taken a lot of time out of our schedules, we've all you know driven long distances or whatever we enjoy what we're doing we wouldn't do it if we weren't enjoying right. it and uh i don't know yeah i mean i the season's been a lot of ups and downs for me obviously i mean hearing a deer get hit by a car after you jump it is pretty low point <laughs> when did that happen for you you okay. don't listen to these yeah, Aww, i don't listen to podcasts <laughs> What what all right, mm -mm. I can't go back Tell over me later. It. You Whatever. Gotta listen You'll have to, to listen to them. It's in the beginning of one. Oh, of them. what a dick! You don't. Yeah. Oh. No, I'll admit it. I'm a I'm a shitty podcast person. I don't. It's okay. I, I don't, don't listen care. to our own podcast. I well, I thought that was the lowest part of my season. But I talk to all you guys now. all the time. The well, fact that you don't listen to the Give podcast. Me your <laughs> you guys are my friends. Why should I have to listen to the podcast and know your seasons? This is bullshit. Unplug them. Why you gotta slam everything? I'm a little upset now. Have you, you ever listened to one of these? Yes. Oh, one of them. <laughs> Only the ones he's on. <laughs> Wait, let me. Guess. No, I've never listened to those. <laughs> Why do three. I want to listen to myself talk? <laughs> to I don't want to hear myself talk. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe then you would realize how loud you get. <laughs> yeah, I don't care. <laughs> I really don't care. I don't care. Well, yeah, it's been it's been cool. Uh, all the info and just absorbing up your guys' knowledge is the most I've learned since I was legal to possess a license. Just all in this past year. All the information that came in through this network this year definitely played a major role in how I approached my season. And uh, it definitely changed my mentality a little bit. There's a couple guys in particular that were impactful about the way I think and, you know, what my mindset is about when I go into the woods, what I hope to get out of it, you You're know. <laughs> <laughs> you all right? Uh oh. He's overwhelmed. Uh oh. Brought him down. Uh, He's overwhelmed. Up. That's okay. okay. Arms up. I'm That's funny you. though. Well, I know I'm. Thanks, Ryan. A big part of who you are. <laughs> <laughs> Right back to it. Yeah. So. No, I, I learned a lot from doing this. And that was kind of my hopes, you know. I didn't have, like, a, a mentor figure growing up deer hunting. I just didn't. The only input that I had is the DVDs and the oh, channels. Was, I'm sorry. And, and the TV that, in, in the, you know. TNN. Yeah, Sportsman's Channel and stuff, you know. And all it did is make me a obscenely shitty deer hunter for the type of deer hunting it's that... It's a warped vision of what it yeah. is. And the internet kind of reconciled that because you can find guys like John Eberhardt, Dan Infault, 
bunch of us goofballs. Yeah, there's yeah. a there's a pile of them of guys that actually really understand deer and know how their mentality is around pressured situations. It's just a completely different animal than on a managed farm. And all the deer hunting network stuff is all done through basically managed farms where they can get high quality video and shoot giant bucks and for years and years that's what everybody wanted and that's what we had access to. So that's how I learned that's how I thought I learned how to deer hunt. And it just steered me way in the wrong direction, you know. And so when I and I'll credit Mark Kenyon. When I found Wired to Hunt, it was a completely different thing. It was just like this average Joe guy who loved to deer hunt. That's how it started out. I would have to say that too. I I really got fired up. I've ne- I didn't even know what a podcast was until I heard Wired to Hunt. <laughs> really? I, I I had no idea. That was, was your first podcast that you found. It it was my first. And the first cut <laughs> is the deepest. <laughs> no, but uh, I uh, Mark was my I got, first. I have a, a lot of respect for Mark and um. Listen to that. I learned a lot from him. And then immediately after I started listening to Wired to Hunt, uh, was it Truth in the Stand? Uh, I can't think Truth, Truth from, from the, the stand. stand. Truth from the Stand. That's what it was. Shout Truth. out, powerful Clint Campbell. Yeah, Clint, awesome guy. And uh, I loved his podcast. And that's I'm, I have to admit that with all the time I worked this last year, I listened to almost zero podcasts. I couldn't even listen to, to our podcast. But I shouldn't have to listen to it to know about your season. Three. That still bothers me. <laughs> but anyways, um, it bothers me how much you're hitting the bar right now. I don't. Know. You I feel do. like I you're know. gonna throw something. We at need me. to put. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think we're gonna get them like a, a four mouse pads <laughs> or something. You got marine hands. <laughs> um, no, but uh, I'm not gonna take the stage anymore. You guys ruined it for me. <laughs> <laughs> Leave that there. I want to see how many times you. I'm not going to hit it anymore. Now I'm going to be self-conscious about it. <laughs> Good. You've been beating the shit out of my bar for an hour. <laughs> Maybe I'm done beating it. <laughs> <laughs> you get worked up. <laughs> Don't get what, me going. What we were saying is uh, I just wanted to learn from this as much as everybody else. The whole yeah reason you got into doing this podcast. Right. Yep. Hundred percent. Uh, I saw that there was a not a great outlet for the average working class deer hunter. Maybe even slightly below average. Maybe even below <laughs> average. Way below average. No, but the guy, like the real life guy, that's working and having a family and deer hunting. And how is that guy supposed to balance all these things out and yeah. still find time to be a successful deer hunter? Can you do it? Can you do it? Can it be done? Well, you need to I gauge think your own can. success in a different in your own I way. I think it can. Right. I think you can go out every year and I think you can kill build big kill big deer where other people can't and where other people are going to bitch and whine and complain that there aren't any big deer. I think you can go kill them every year. By if getting you, educated. If you do the right thing, right. A lot of it has to I do with do it luck. Yeah, it, why don't you get off your soapbox and sit back down with the three of us that have empty tags right now? <laughs> right. Our tag suit's going to be so tasty. <laughs> <laughs> you can't deny that you've had opportunities to go hunt that you didn't take, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's been a couple, but not very many. You know what I actually took a, to heart a little bit more, too? And I know because I've, I've made the personal mistakes in the past as um, I'm starting to get I'm not going to say I'm an old guy, but I'm starting to get a little more mature in my age. <laughs> and I've, I've realized the mistakes that you're I've a, made in you, the past. You're a mature buck. It's I'm, I'm getting a little bit more mature. It's all those acorns you're eating. And uh, I realized it before this, but it kind of re- reiterated it, was uh, a comment that Dan Infault made about, in the end, um, what he's learned up to now and he, I don't know if he'll deny this now, but I doubt it. Dan's not that kind of guy. Um, he would spend more time with his family and less time out in the woods because that is what is really important here. Mm-hmm. We all have our obsession, and it is the woods. It's white-tailed deer hunting. Mm-hmm. And this season, I took 
those words to heart and things that I've learned in the past, problems I've caused myself in uh, relationships and um, things I've know I've regretted and missed out on. And I've spent more time at home too this deer hunting season. I've tried to pick and choose my time mm -hmm. what more wisely this year. And yeah, I've missed out on time out in the woods, but I didn't miss out on it because I gained it in time with my family too. Sure. So um, I'm starting. I think this season something I'm taking a more to. I'm taking back myself more on this season is that balance. Yeah, you got to work a balance. That you can't balance. just go yeah. hunt every weekend when you work. No. no you every can't. other weekend you have to find time to spend well, with your kids. Well, not even the weekend. I mean, look at the week. Or right. during the week. I mean, there, I would there I would might be a 3-day stretch where you're like, "Oh my god, it's perfect." Right? Yeah. And it's a Tuesday, Wednesday, and a Thursday. Mm -hmm. yep. And you're going to be at work. At work or even early season, sometimes you've got that chance when after work you can go out and hunt. Yeah, but it's but tough. But I get home and my my son, as I'm going to go out the door, says, Dad, don't go. Right. I got that or, this year or, from my daughter, too. Never had it before. Or Dad would take me out in the woods. Just throw and I say, puzzle. you know what? <laughs> Let's go take a walk out back. Here's the, some candy. No, I, I just chose not to go out in the woods because personally it was the best decision for myself and what my goals right. are. I too. totally get that. So, um, and I'm not saying that luck doesn't play – a big part of it, like it plays a part in it. We'll just say this it plays year, a part in it. I was very fortunate, and I'll honestly admit that I was two inches from not having any deer. Because if I had shot one inch higher last week, I wouldn't have killed that buck. And if I had shot one inch higher a couple weeks ago on my other buck, I wouldn't have killed that buck. So literally two fucking inches made my deer season i dropped two deer dead in their tracks whereas i could have had two deer by good fortune completely gone that i would have missed this year and it would have been an epic failure so it's though it's 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 uh time to get to the range <laughs> no you know what i mean yeah i mean that can play a little bit in it but there's so many variables that come in. It is. And, yeah, preparation is key. Pre you want to prep. You want But prep, it's, prep, prep, it's prep, just prep, that but. narrow of a window. Circumstantial. And you know what? I was talking yesterday with Dan Infault, and he said, this was a humbling season for me. What is it? Dan what said did he say? this was a very humbling season for him. Oh. He said, I had a very cocky attitude. For a long period of time, that if a deer came within any proximity of me, it was dead. Well, that's and the serial said, killer way. I have missed a handful of good deer this year. Handful? Yeah, Dan. It's all on his YouTube page. <laughs> if I listen to podcasts, yeah, I'd right. know it. Yeah, if you go to Extreme Whitetail Tactics and follow Dan on uh, YouTube, you'll learn a he lot. He has of stuff all his from videos on there. I listen and to He's ton of missed. Things a couple good bucks this year and he just said man it was a humbling season so you know if a guy like dan m fault goes through a deer season and he doesn't get a deer you're not gonna convince me that at some point i'm not just as good as dan m fault is that what you're saying <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> it's not gonna happen I'll take to that. everybody I'll take that. at some point in time you know well I'm, I'm i'm hoping that i maybe get a little closer to as good as dan m fault maybe next month yeah, I don't. I don't. That's a good thing. I'm glad you brought that up because I have a note here to mention it. The Dan and Fault workshop, the scouting workshop, that is the uh, one of the giveaways for the digital deer camp. Dan still is yet to figure out a date of when that's going to be done in January, which obviously makes it extremely difficult for us to plan plan and make a podcast and get it out to whoever wins the package. Right. So he's going to do another one in late February or March. It's a good time to do it. He's going to set those dates up here pretty quickly. And that's when we're going to go. Well, I got to tell you that from the, when I started listening to the podcast and I listened to Dan and fault and I listened to all these different guys, um, Dan and fault was one that I would dream of. Like, I wish I could just, I, you know, I, I could come up with a hundred bucks or 150 or 200 bucks, whatever the cost was. I wish I could spend a day out in the woods with this guy to learn what he has. If you watch some of his old YouTube videos and his new ones, 
here I am banging on it again. But uh, <laughs> he thing. is he is a cool dude, and uh, he's got a great way of talking about deer hunting and scouting deer and hunting them. And he I, is. I just I'm, he's, um, I'm excited to meet him in person and to. Possibly I'll tell you what. I know for a fact that Dan doesn't listen to podcasts, so it's it's not a some of the best of us don't. It's not a thing where <laughs> he's going to hear this. I'm not saying the best of us, but he's, he's going to hear this and uh, be wise to it. But I was talking to Dan last week, and we were talking about muzzleloader hunting, and he said, "Yeah, I just don't muzzleloader hunt." And I said, "Why?" He goes, well, "I don't have a muzzleloader." <laughs> I'm like, just thinking just in my head, like, "Go by, you it. go." Don't. By yeah. No, I mean. And so I wanted to. That's crazy to me. Yeah, I know. I wanted to, <laughs> I, and uh, this thought crossed my mind, and I wonder if anybody else would be interested in it. A GoFundMe through the deer <laughs> through through the Deer Hunter Podcast community, and um, you can message us on Facebook or Instagram or send us an email if if you think this might be something that you'd be interested in, and I'd be interested to see how many guys would be. Ryan's got a CVA that he's never going to no, use. No, that was the thing I was about to say. <laughs> Don't buy him a CVA. <laughs> well, I wondered Give if a, slingshot. a group of us You'd guys be off. would it, would it be fun? Would it be cool? Dan Infault's done a lot for the deer hunting community, right? Let's bring him a muzzle loader. Let's buy him a muzzle loader. Let's buy him a fucking muzzle loader. Everybody that wants anybody that listens anything to but this, a CVA will beat our motto. Listen. <laughs> Shut the fuck up about CVA for the rest of the podcast. All right, fine. <laughs> fine. <laughs> Are you done? I can't promise. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to buy him a CVA. Thank you. We're going to buy him. Now. Maybe we'll buy him a Doc White. Whatever it is, I don't care. Would Traditions. you guys, and and I'll, I'd be interested to see who messages in on this. When you listen to this episode, if you're interested just say, text uh, text me or through whatever, Instagram or Facebook or email, and just say, yeah, I'd be interested. And we'll see how many guys message in, and I'll break down the numbers. I'll commit to it right and, now. And, uh, and I will too. All right. I'd like to buy Dan and fall the muzzle loader. I'm going to put 20 say, bucks on the table right now. And say thank you for everything that you've done for, like, the real-life deer hunter. Right. Because Dan – has turned down in in all seriousness, Dan has turned down a ton of offers from companies to sponsor products that would be willing to pay Dan money because he says, Nope. Guys don't need that. That's not gonna make them better deer hunters. Dan has taken It might help money. him out personally, but it's not gonna help him. It would help him else. out huge. He'd have a muzzle loader. <laughs> <laughs> He would. I'm telling you right now, Dan Infault's turned down tens of thousands of dollars. Oh, I'm sure. To product endorsement. Look this guy up and look at what he's killed in his career. Because he wants to he wants to be real. And I thought, you know, that'd be a cool like thing for him to get from a group of guys that just say, Hey, like we're thankful for what you've done for the community. Regular guys. Yeah. Does he want a muzzle loader hunt? Oh, come on. Does Dan and Fault want a deer hunt? I mean. Pretty sure. Shut your yeah. mouth. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, if I read it correctly. Yeah. I think he'd be like absolutely. He's probably already tagged out by that point, just to be honest. That's he true. hasn't killed a deer yet. I'm saying on a normal season for this guy. Come on. Dan kills deer all the time. Wisconsin season's a little bit different, and they have a later season. And uh, honestly, I think he would really like having a muzzleloader. I yeah. know he'd want a muzzleloader. Yeah. Even so. if he, a muzzleloader is great <clears throat> to have. It's fun. I know a lot of guys that listen to this are all for Michigan. I know there's some guys, a lot of guys that listen in Wisconsin and Ohio and all around the Midwest and all around the country. I was just looking at where our downloads come from and all around the world. Really, See, there's some in Australia, Korea. Korea? Yeah. What? North or South? <laughs> <laughs> Kim Jong-un. You will not want to hear that. <laughs> Mr. Jong-un is a big deer hunter, if you didn't know. Yeah. Fat little prick. <laughs> yeah. Chubby little fucker. Uh, I think I'm chubby gone. bunny. <laughs> what? 
I think I'm gone. You are gone. We're finishing this thing too up. Too far You're gone. gone. You are too we far We're gone. not restarting this. Good night, Drew. Drew's <laughs> audio just cut out. We're not restarting I literally it haven't talked in 15 minutes and my mic goes out. <laughs> well, I'll tell you that uh, no, what most people haven't heard so of. So if – He's listen, had a pounding headache. We're going to wrap this up. Listening to me. If uh, – <laughs> If anybody's interested in being involved with that, uh, send us a message because that's something that I'd like to do. I've been thinking about Free it for a Dan while. Free Dan Infault. Just uh, we'll we'll and everybody will have a piece of that. Like when Dan goes out and shoots a friggin' world record whitetail. Can we put our names on it? <laughs> I don't know that we can. Yeah, brand it. We can brand sign it, it under the butt plate so nobody sees. But if he right. takes it off, we'll be there. <laughs> we'll get a label maker. Any We're gonna wrap this up. All right. We all need to get out of here. Um, I gotta pee real bad. <laughs> <laughs> this has been good. Normally, I just take my headset off. One thing that I want to reiterate, uh, I don't know if I brought it up earlier, but I want to say that uh, everybody and anybody that's been following the show for its first year, thank you. Huge thank you. And I want to know what people want more of in 2018. It's probably me. <laughs> if I stop right there. <laughs> I know what I want less of. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody cares about that, Drew. Yeah. If you guys have ideas for episodes or things that you want to hear or people that you want us to reach out to or products that you know about that you're using that are great deer hunting products, that are companies that people don't really know about, um, I want to hear about that. We want to know about that. Let us know. What about I want to do uh, an episode defending CVA muzzle loaders because I really like my Optima. Drew's channel's cut God, out. So. I hate you, Drew. Ryan's happy I right now. You. I'm seeing yeah. squigglies Shh. on there, so oh, I'm that's still right. feeling you like I'm still doing good. <laughs> that guy who was on the podcast before that left early. <laughs> 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 so I know one thing that I do want to do coming up. We've got a ton of messages about this. Um, damn, I'm going to draw a blank on the damn guy's name. What's Here his name? Go. The guy up north. That's the controversial world record buck. Rampola? Oh. Mitch Rampola. You so know listen, what? I, hold on. Wait. I've got a yep, lot of perfect. inside info Good. on that. Great. Because yeah. we're going to do a whole, and don't even spill any of the beans that you have right I won't. now. I won't we're going to do some. a whole episode on Mitch Rampola and the Rampola buck. You should have somebody that's from northern Michigan, that area. Well, we are gonna we could get all that, and we're also uh, we're going to include John Eberhart in the conversation. Oh, that would be nice. Because John is, you know, right at that guy's age. Mm-hmm. And so when all this stuff was going on, John was, like, kind of right on the front lines. John was a scorer for uh, what? Uh, uh, whatever the book's called in Michigan. I yeah. Can't think of it. Right. Commemorative Bucks of Michigan. There Commemorative Bucks of Michigan. Right. John's an official yeah. scorer. So he knows a whole mm-hmm. lot about Mitch. I learned and a lot recently he, about he that. He talked a lot about him when we were at John's house off the podcast. But So we're going to do a whole – in-depth research i'm going to ask wow. all you guys to spend a little bit of time and do some research and For some sure. digging and some reading I'm gonna and some we're quotes. gonna hold do a whole episode on mitch rampala and them rampala bucks the snake oh, here he's the taking more slithery he's a sneaky snake you <laughs> know what i snake. know i'm kind of bummed that we didn't talk about this if uh, anybody this does not know what we're talking about go to youtube and put in i'm a snake <laughs> <laughs> we I'm didn't talk f- about our plans for next year really uh well i got that right let's do now. that at the first of the year well, Drew, you're no longer here. <laughs> we're kind of talking <laughs> about that right now. I mean, that's why I'm asking people. What do they want? Yeah, we want some. Yeah, this I, isn't. Uh, well, I've got. Okay, this I'll is save as my much notes. about the community of guys that listen to this show and message in every week as it is, you know, about us. Like, um, in order for us to grow this thing, right. we have to cater to the people that you like to listen to it. We've got to two ears and one still. mouth, right? Yeah, two right. ears, one mouth. Two ears, one mouth. Three ways to enter. Three ways to enter. Let's 
can we leave that in 2017? If she's a gamer. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> All right. Nobody's going to argue. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Right. Oh, YouTube channel. Uh, <laughs> We're going to dead air. Try. I'm not gonna try. We're gonna. We're doing it. God damn it. Yeah, we're doing it. Oh. God damn it. We're gonna invest a little Easy. bit of money into the studio and very a little, little bit. Very little <laughs> bit. As <laughs> minimal as <laughs> possible. <laughs> screw some mattresses to the wall. We gotta spend money on hunting <laughs> stuff too. <laughs> yeah, we're looking for used mattresses. <laughs> 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 Not too used. <laughs> Lightly used. I think there's used hotel equipment we could hit up. <laughs> Lightly. Uh, Lightly used. Lightly used mattresses. Not Maybe. Motel 6 mattresses? No. <laughs> no, we're not looking for used mattresses. We'll leave the jizz right. out for you. We're going <laughs> to. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Nicholas. <laughs> That's going to need some bleach. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Beep. <laughs> We're going to invest in a better camera for, for the YouTube feed. And I think what we're going to start doing is putting the podcast out on YouTube a day before we release it on iTunes and you everything. You know, you're talking about raising money for Dan Info. Why don't we raise money for <laughs> <laughs> your brother? Because <laughs> we're selfless around here. We are pretty selfless yeah. in our selfish ways. Did you guys think, was that ridiculous, or do you think that would be something cool to do? For Dan? Yeah. I would throw money on it just because the of guy doesn't have a muzzle loader. I think it'd be cool. I just well, don't want to give it to busy. him. He's too busy. I just don't want to give it to him. And be like, oh, cool. No, not it's at not all. Like that. Not no. if my name's on it. I think he honestly, like, if I read it correctly, You'd that would like it. really, really like mean a lot to him. I think it would yeah. honor him. Yeah, that'd be us, cool. Yeah. Us poor I'd be folk up for that. rallied it up when when I told Dan. That I was like really thankful for what he's done when when I was with him that time that we interviewed him on the podcast and yeah. uh, Alex and I went over there for the weekend. You could just tell in seeing him and in his voice that like he doesn't hear that. He gets a lot of shit. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Which it's is probably a lot of should. a lot of online probably shit coming at him, you know, or not seeing somebody in front of him like genuinely thanking him. Yeah. I I don't. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know exactly why it could be. I really like the guy a whole lot. I think lot. he's cool he's a, as shit. He's yeah. a radster. But, you know, yeah. he kind of goes against everything in the popular deer hunting media, right? Yeah. By not shooting bucks in Iowa? Yeah, and by not endorsing products that right. don't work. He has no use for, you know. He said he, he is not going to listen to this, so it doesn't matter. All right. <laughs> He told would me. You, he like, hasn't got time for this Would shit. you take the muzzle loader back if you handed it to him and then realized he had a pile of Ozonix sitting in his house that he's <laughs> about to start endorsing? <laughs> yes, I would take it back. <laughs> he told me that that's who, uh, over the course of time, he's had the most uh, um, offers from for Ooh. sponsorships. Ozonics? Scent control Scent products. Scent control. Because he's been a guy that's not a big – he doesn't beat his drum to – But there's such a, like, a cash grab. It, he it's goes back to what my uncle says, play the fucking wind. Right. Like the fucking Indians did and your grandpa did. Yeah. <laughs> Mountmen didn't take you baths know? for seasons at a time. And right. Uh, play the fucking wind. Slay dude. No I, doubt there's technology. There's I was. But I like Dan that he's, he's uh, a cute downright guy. dirty deer hunter this You're year. Dirty as fuck. Little dirt ball. She I was. always used to take showers, put the deodorant on, the spray and all that. This year it was just like. Outright offensive. I knew I'm just not doing any of that. I noticed you wore your. I'm stepping on. Your leather I can't hold it any longer. Your danners a lot of times. You know, we'd be doing this, doing that, and then I noticed you'd be wearing them hunting. So it's not like you were had your special super duper scent control, no. scent lock booties buried under the ground that you pull out for deer hunting. It doesn't matter what you do; they're gonna smell at you. Yeah. So you know the ozone stuff that definitely works. I'd be interested in ozone for like cleaning my clothes versus washing them in a washing machine. Yeah, there's machine. no doubt there's definitely. science behind the ozone technology, but right, we know gonna... that firsthand from running ozone in the airstream. I mean, yeah. it cleans. Right. Yeah, well, I uh, at work I test high voltage cables, and we'll put sixty four thousand volts on a cable. I think it's recording. Yeah, he's it? fine. Oh, okay. 
And when you have 64 uh, kV on a cable, it'll actually generate corona, which is ozone. And the air, you can actually smell yeah. the air. It smells like static Ionizing, right. which is the same concept as ozone, or an ozonics machine does. So, I mean, there is, it does kill bacteria in the air. air but right. That would be glorious, especially for, you know, kind of a rustic camp where you don't have the luxury of a washing machine. And you're cooking, you got fires going on. And <laughs> trying his pants off. <laughs> it's weird. <laughs> trying on that playful. <laughs> um. <clears throat> so yeah, we're gonna try to boost our YouTube channel up a little bit this year. Uh, possibly do a couple little short hunting videos and document some of our hunting camps and stuff. Do some off-site shows. Um. So please. Uh, Deer Hunter Podcast at Outlook dot com. Deer Hunter underscore Podcast on Instagram, and Is that then what it's supposed to be Deer Hunter Podcast underscore. at Facebook. Yeah. And just shoot us a message or an email, it's and let us know what you want more of in the year two thousand eighteen. Deer Hunter Podcast is the YouTube channel also, and uh, the Twitter is Deer Podcast. Fuck, I you don't know. You guys are fucking tweeting? I, the only reason I, too. I mentioned the Twitter uh, is, cool, but tweet? is if you follow the Twitter, it'll uh, when the new Sounds YouTube like videos word. load up, it'll pop a notification up on Twitter, too. <coughs> a lot of people are into the Twitter. Facebook sucks. Let's face it. Yeah, it that's why I don't have it. I think Instagram's a shit. And Pinterest yeah, but a lot. I like Pinterest I mean, a lot. Facebook's good for some stuff, and it's not great for others. Right. Whatever. Um. Everybody. New Year's. We're going up north. We're yep. gonna go on a late season, a late late season <laughs> archery hunt. Yeah. We're going on New l- Year's Day. Um, New Year's Eve. New Year's Eve morning. Yeah. We're going out to the Pigeon River State Forest, and we're going on our tree hunt. Whew. Yep. Yep. Godspeed. Grinder out. I'm going to yep. tape, uh, oh, tape a hand warmer to the back of my shooting tab. I'm going to buy those little heating pads for inside your boots. For up Do there. it. Who knows? It Do might it. not even be that cold. Might it's going to be cold. It's going to be horrible and nasty. It's going to be a little 20s you guys down just here. Think about it. It's going to be bad. It's it, The temps are dropping next week, like single digits. Yeah. Swamp Pounder. It's be fucking nasty. Uncle Estrus isn't scared. Uncle Estrus. <laughs> Never are scared. <laughs> Glenn Tarsal. Estrus. Glenn Tarsal heading out on a late, late season deer hunt. The Estrus will be flowing. <laughs> uh, I want to tell I people love those names. to, uh, again, if you haven't gone to our website, go to it and just scroll down to the bottom and uh, subscribe to our newsletter because I'm going to start uh, here. Oh, uh, January, February, when I have a little bit of time putting some recipes and things up for like some quick and easy, real good meals for. You've always been and quick and easy. So yeah, that's some prep yeah. tricks and tips. Um, and keep an eye out. Pretty quick here, we're starting to work right now on putting some uh, hats and t-shirts together. Please do. Yeah. Yeah. So please you'll do. be able to go on our website, and there will be a link that you can click on. And if you want to get a Deer Hunter podcast uh, T-shirt or hoodie or sticker, um, maybe a sticker. Drew's not putting any stickers on his shit. That's gonna be why. something that's <laughs> that we're gonna try to get together here in the next couple months. So that'd be cool. I'd like to have that. Um, we already covered the scouting workshop. Digital Deer Camp, I believe it's still open for yep to the end of the season. First. Digital Deer Camp is still open. Uh, Lifestyle Dude, those, Lost. Are there a lot com. of submissions for the Digital Deer Camp? There's a lot of submissions for Digital Deer Camp, but there's very few for kids. So if you have a kid that shot a deer this year, you really should enter. Doesn't matter there, what kind of deer it is. They're gonna win a prize, and they might not want it, and you can have it. Dude, right. look at that. Have you seen the lineup, though? Yeah. It's I, bad ass. I, I want to win it, but I don't got shit to Exodus, show for it. Exodus has two trail cameras that they ship to my house that are gifts for the digital deer camp that I've been looking at. That. Oh, I Dude, get... that is awesome. That is one of the best. I hope they do it again next year, and I yeah. can no, I think they at will. least put a dough up and try We had a lot it. of – it was a – Proper up. We had nice. a real good turnout this year for digital deer camp. 
Good. So lifestyleslost.com, digital deer camp. Um, Those guys are awesome. If you still have a deer, buck, doe, spike, fawn, button Any buck. Of- if your kid got a deer, uh, anything, they go enter your photo and have a chance to win some awesome prizes. And it's open for probably what? Till New Year's? Yep. New Year's Day. January 1. So, uh, I wanted to mention, and possibly you could Google it real quick for me. Uh, in Kalamazoo, the end of January, there's a traditional bow expo yes. that we're going to be going to. I want to go this Dude, year. January possibly we're going to, uh, I offer to, I haven't heard back from yet, uh, to help out at the, if BHA is going to have a booth at the expo. Nice. Um, but there's going to be a pint night that night to follow the expo for BHA. What month is that in again? He's January? looking at the date right now. Right. It's the end of January that, in uh, Kalamazoo. Shit, January is such a busy month now already for me. Mean? Oh, I was going to say it's like the least busy no, month for, of the for, year. For me it is. Hmm. What was it at Arcadia Ales last year, the pint night? Oh, uh, last January year. January 26th and 28th. Okay. Oh, God, I don't even know if I can do it. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Don't be so dramatic, Ryan. <laughs> I really want to go. The, I'm, I'm just get, I just got two traditional bows given to me by my uncle. You have to go. I'm excited yeah. about yeah. traditional archery for next year for myself. You ain't so. got shit to do then. You're coming. I've, I've, I've got a lot of um, shit to do. In got January. drug your ass. You're coming. Get in the trunk. So we're gonna. I'm Please gonna do. Try to do whatever we can to. Uh, help out Support. if BHA is going to have a booth there. And then uh, we'll definitely be at the pint night afterwards. And uh, that will be really cool because it's going to be the first time that we get together since we have a new, and I want to say congratulations to Drew Youngdike. And oh, yeah. he's the new chair. And Jason Nikoff too. Yeah. Yep. Congratulations to Meeks. Uh, Mason Nikoff. Mason. Mason Nikoff. Mason Nikoff. Also known as Jason Meekoff. And the the Drew. So uh, Jason is now the Great Lakes Regional Coordinator, coordinator. for Backcountry Hunters and Anglers. So he's going to be in charge of essentially Michigan, uh, Minnesota, and awesome Wisconsin. Guy. And then uh, Drew Youngdike stepped up. And he's going to now be the chair of our state of Michigan. And I just cannot express how fortunate <laughs> that I feel to have those two guys steering the ship for that group here in our state. They are very much responsible oh. for how well uh, our chapter has grown here in its first year. We're extremely lucky. Amen to that. I I chaired a a local chapter for another conservation organization, and uh, these guys, with with just with uh, the group in general, with backwoods uh, hunters and anglers, uh, it's they're huge. They're huge for getting people involved. Right. For just the, the average guy. Um, those two inv- individuals, the Drew and Jason that you're talking about, these these mythical beasts <laughs> that are, are running the Michigan chapter, they're s- such approachable people. They're great oh, yeah. to talk to. Um, they go got to the rendezvous. Shit together. Well, it's just not they know even, the facts. Yeah, they're they know educated. everything. And yeah. They'll educate you. They're gonna freely share their information with you, and we rely on them heavily. We do. We really do. Good people and great you organization. Know, I don't read. Give them your money. Get involved. The entire backcountry journal. When it comes to me, I I, I skim through it. Um, I try to read as much of the articles that I can, but it seems like every time I read through there, our state is getting credited with some of the stuff that we're doing, um, and it's because of them. Oh, yeah, for sure. And, uh, I mean, Drew does, Drew's done a lot, and Jason does a lot, too. Yeah, follow these guys. Are, follow even Drew on Instagram. This guy's a beast with his <laughs> train to hunt. He's out of control. I, I, I purposely try to hide it from my wife. This guy is an animal. <laughs> 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 it's pretty cool. Uh, yeah. He's <laughs> so big, big thank you to those guys and a big congratulations. And uh, we got your back, like, through the 
whatever comes our way. Like we got we got your guys back, and we're thankful that you guys are uh, doing what you're doing. So very much. Glenn Tarsal thanks you from the bottom of his heart. Mm, stanky heart. <laughs> You're so stanky. The heart's rotten. No, yeah, we appreciate all <laughs> the hard work. Tarsal. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. Did you pick that? When I he did. Said, I did. That's great. <laughs> Thought of it having that staring competition with that crusty old doe up in the pigeon. <laughs> Glenn Tarsal. So that's a wrap on. 2017 on the first year of the Deer Hunter Podcast. I know Christmas will be over by the time everybody hears this. I hope you had a wonderful, great Merry Christmas. Uh, I want to thank you guys a whole lot for all the time. <laughs> Drew's fucking sleeping <laughs> in this chair there. <laughs> he's still here. You don't hear him very well because his m- headset went out. I think I'm recording No, he's fine. You're, you, we he's just recording. can't hear him. His right. audio is still recording. Can you hear us? No. Lucky he likes man. it. <laughs> That's man. So, yeah, no, thank you guys a lot for everything that you did this year. It's, uh, I know it's been a lot and it's been fun. and been looking, a lot of fun. Really looking forward to 2018 and everything past that. You know, this is something that we can hand down to our, our kids. So It's a stepping stone, man. We're just moving on to bigger and better all the time. Right. Heck yeah. And I will justify my sleepiness by having a, a sick two-year-old at home and not feeling great myself. So Well, we all have cold. RSV. Yeah. My family his family our family has a uh, respiratory virus so, so infectious oh, cool yeah hey merry christmas i ain't gonna kiss you <laughs> before i leave tonight <laughs> so uh christmas will be over hope everybody had a wonderful christmas but have a great new year thanks for all the support this year and our first year and uh, really looking forward to and want a lot of really uh, i mean that when i say that message in i want some input on what what people want the direction of the show to go in this year what you want more of least of i don't care i mean we're gonna, we're gonna give <laughs> anyways, don't give them anyways don't give them don't give them too much right. no clinky tumblers right yeah It'd be guys no more it. clinky tumblers we'd appreciate it if you guys didn't drink beer on the podcast shut up <laughs> <laughs> blocked if, I didn't, drink on, if yeah. I didn't drink on the podcast when would i drink blocked <laughs> um block them the uh, last thing I want to say is uh, please, anybody that's been following or listening to the show, if you haven't yet, uh, please go to iTunes. I don't know if you're on Android what exactly your move is because I don't use any of those platforms. The way you can do it is if you have a laptop, download iTunes onto your laptop. Yeah, but isn't there uh, other ways like, if you were listening through Stitcher, whatever, to give the... You can leave a review on Stitcher. You cannot on Google Play. You can't leave a review on Google Play. No. So, by any means possible, if you'd be willing to do it, and iTunes really is the, the big one. If you're listening through an Apple phone, if you haven't yet gone to iTunes and left a uh, ranking, it's unbelievably critical for us going forward that you would do so i was trying to think of a scenario in my head like a way to interpret it of the level of importance that it is and i can't the what i came up with is it's like defcom tipping your waitress if you listen to this podcast for 2017 on an Apple phone, and you haven't gone to iTunes and left a five-star rating on this podcast, <laughs> it's like you've been going out to eat all year and not leaving a tip. Cheap fuckers. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only way possible going forward that we're going to have a leg to stand on. That and subscribing to the YouTube channel helps. Subscribing to the YouTube channel is huge. and uh, Mailing list? The, the mailing list is is great, but we really need some five star reviews. Um, there's some other podcasts that uh, are getting ahead of us in the iTunes rankings. Get out! Yeah, Just get no, out of there! Like it's... real quickly. <laughs> See yeah, that right. star farthest to the right? Click on that song, bitch. <laughs> farthest right star, <laughs> please. 
it, it only takes a couple minutes. Um, and it's, like I said, it's like that important. It's like tipping your waitress, man. If you've been going in and eating yourself a good breakfast all year at a restaurant and not walking out of there without leaving a tip, I mean, legally you don't have to. Yeah. Right. The only but. advantage you have by being Alyssa is we're not going to spit in your food. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> Unless we see it a pint night. Mm. Just kidding. No, we're not going <laughs> to spit in your food. <laughs> or your pint. But uh, it would be greatly appreciated. And I really appreciate the ones that we've got. Uh, and I'll tell you what, man. I'm literally humbled by reading what guys have written in there. Because my long-term goal of this podcast is to be a, a, a just a channel of deer hunting information that the average guy that's working and has a family can really relate to. Yeah. And a ton of the guys that have written reviews on iTunes, that's what they've said. This is the most relatable uh, podcast that's out there to the average working guy. And I can't tell you to the guys that have written that how much that means to me because that's 100% what I set out to do. I mean, we're not... The initiative of this is to not monetize and uh, make a living off of it. We're we're still broke. <laughs> 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 we're not weekend warriors. We're just hunting when we can. <laughs> Plain and simple. And we just want to build a community of like-minded individuals. Real dudes. Safe space. Unsafe space. <laughs> <laughs> so... Please, uh, whatever outlet that you listen to this to, um, it's really important to us now that it's the end of the year, um, more so than it has been for the rest of the year, that if you would go to iTunes or if you can do it on Stitcher. Um, what is Stitcher? It's an Android app All that right. people listen to the podcast <laughs> to. You look so angry. <laughs> he, you're such an angry Drew. <laughs> oh, he's <laughs> so <at> angry. <laughs> it looks uh, like horns coming out of his head. <laughs> <laughs> That's the, pretty accurate. What the you fuck? You don't want to get caught internet? in a dark alley with this guy. <laughs> and that so Jane so Silent Bob. Via intranet. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> So that's a wrap on 2017. It's been a hell of a ride. Yeah. It's yeah. been a good one. We're just getting started. <laughs> just getting started. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty excited for next year. Well, the year ain't over yet, but um, <laughs> I'm, I'm looking forward to some scouting podcasts. Well, they're coming up Shed pretty hunts. quickly. Squirrels. Scouting's a huge part of Squirrel the whole deal. Hunting. So that's, uh, that's we are going to be sure. getting into that really quickly. That's why I want to hone... You need to start on. doing squats and lunges so you don't have little girly knees when we go on hiking. Yeah, such dude. Girly Now's knees. the time to start. So squats feminine. and lunges. I mean, you can literally do it while you're drinking beer and watching TV. I'm doing right. it. Hump a moose out, old cow style. Can, can you do a trapping podcast? Yeah, sure. I don't trap, but I want to know about it. I wouldn't mind doing some trapping. And some I'm sure there's going to be ice fishing ones and whatnot yeah. coming up. So yeah. I suck at that too. Have me on there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. right. Is that it? That's it. That's it for 2017. Thanks a whole lot, everybody. Merry yeah, Christmas, filthy you. animals. And have a <laughs> Thanks, good everybody. Year. Keep the change, you filthy animal. Christmas is over by the time everybody. Yeah, close enough, though. It'll be a day. Yeah. Right. Happy enough. happy holidays. Happy Hanukkah, Kwanzaa. Santa ate his cookies, that fat bitch. <laughs> 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 Merry Christmas. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, See guys. Ya. See ya. Sir! Sir. Sir.